to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. As promised, here is my conversation with Eric Ross, featuring his philosophy and his process for selling accessories and for the process of the reveal install. Okay, I've never heard anyone describe this accessory selling and reveal install process exactly like this, so I thought it was important to share it with you. Now, it might be how you do it, Okay, maybe it'll just make you think of a new way to do it, all right? And I couldn't help but think, as Eric described his process, how easy that process would be if you were using MyDoma Studio. To have everything right there in your MyDoma Studio platform organized according to the individual project, all ready to click and buy when your client is ready to click and buy. To see how it works, head over to MyDomaStudio.com forward slash a well-designed business. That's MyDomaStudio.com forward slash a well-designed business. All right. I'm curious to see what you think about Eric's process. All right. Have a great day. Decide to be excellent. In our process, you know, we do a one-room reveal or a whole house reveal when we do our project. So we don't deliver things piecemeal. We only Mm. bring it out when it's ready. The whole room we set up in a day. If it's a big house, we'll do two days or three days, but I don't, I don't spend weeks at a time because I get, I, again, I get bored with it. So I want to, <laughs> I'd rather work it's three 12 hour days <laughs> than five, eight hour days. Right, right. So, you know, but we go out the, and we, we take a lot of risks. That's one thing that I, when I talk with designers about how we work and they, they get really interested. Well, so you buy all the accessories and you don't make them keep them. And how does that work? I'm like, well, you know, event, somebody's going to buy it eventually. I mean, I do, I do, we do take risk, but ultimately, you know, most, uh, my stick rate is very high because mm-hmm. once you put a, put a lamp, the perfect lamp on a table and the perfect candle and the perfect tray and, you know, all these things and you, in their house, it's really hard in, for people to, to return it, mm. but you do, that happens. It's to this, yet yeah, last week I had a client return half their stuff. That's, you know, and, but that not not their custom, their accessories. So right, right. So you're they, designing to completion, even though they might not have agreed or purchased to completion. Correct, okay, correct. okay. We set a budget. We basically say, you know, thirty percent of your custom order, you can be prepared to spend on accessories, so that they're not caught off guard. And we're saying that from the beginning of the process mm-hmm. is basically here's what to expect. Um, and so, but it happened. I mean, like I said last week, I mean, it happened, and. And it always is like a check, like, am I doing this right? Am I, you know, we're, I'm, you know, I, I'm a person. I'm not, you know, I still, you know, second guess myself. And that's where you have to go back and really look at your goal. You know, what is it, how, what is it you really believe? What kind of value are you trying to bring to people and sticking with that? So, you know, and I had, I finally, and this, you know, we get our return list and it's half the stuff and you're disappointed. And, oh my God, we've got this and I'll sell it. I'm not that worried about that part. The part I was mad about is. Again, that like, oh, they didn't catch my vision. They didn't catch my – and I, I told my assistant she was madder than I was. And I mm-hmm. said, look, our job is to make it beautiful. If they return half of it or all of it, I've still done my job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I've mm-hmm. wowed them. I don't care. They were they returned it because it was expensive. But mm-hmm. I, mean, I, know, I know why. It was good. Their house was gorgeous when we were done. I mean, yes. duh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I would – that's where I go back to knowing my brand. Right. I was not going to deliver. And she and, and she was giving me the warning. Like I, she basically was like, you know, we don't really keep a lot of accessories. But, you know, Luann, 
that's not my model. My model isn't to deliver furniture and rugs and drapes. My right. model is to wow the person at the install. And they were wow. Like they, their family was there. Her sister was in from out of town and they all were just, this is beautiful. You know, and they were smiling and happy. Now, when they got the bill, they might not have been smiling and happy, <laughs> but I did my job. That's what I stick to is I right. would rather that be, that goes back to my brand, which is, oh my God, he's amazing, but he's high. Right. That's, because my people and people who 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 appreciate my value and want a beautiful home, then they're gonna they're willing to pay the price. The people who aren't, then they weren't my people, and I'm not gonna I'm never gonna convince those people who you know of my of value. Right. So, so I don't I don't try, and I have right. to sort of tell myself that every time is I didn't, because because my personality is one that's like, oh my God, what did I do wrong? Why did they return half of it? I didn't sell them enough. I I didn't give them the reason why to buy. I you know that's just because that's what I do mm -hmm. when I'm when I'm evaluating my projects afterwards when something like that happens and it, and I just come back to, I'm, I did it the way it was supposed to be done. Right. Right. I could have just not brought anything and mm -hmm. you know would have saved myself the agony and the you know having to buy the inventory now i'm having it sit in my warehouse you know that i'll sell to another project it's but yeah i go back well, to it sounds like it just getting my best no matter what right my, my job is to because in order to sleep at night and be happy with the work that i do i had to put lamps in and hang artwork and do dishes on the bookshelves and that even though they returned every single one i right. mean right because right, right. i and that's that's who i am and that's my brand and i performed with excellence and they said you know what i don't i don't want this part of it and that's that's okay with they they didn't do anything wrong i didn't do anything wrong we both you know performed uh, to where my expectation i was i mean i'm always sad when that happens but ultimately I, I presented the best that I could be, and that's what I'm. That's that's where I get to with with things with jobs like that. Is I had to do it that way because that's how I represent my business and my brand. And they didn't return it because it was ugly. Right, 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 right. <laughs> no, it sounded like they just it, they just don't share the the ideals of wanting everything designed to completion. They wanted Correct. a lighter, layered, less layered look, right. and and that's fine. It's their prerogative. Correct. So once I, I always tell people, I'm going to do this, and when I leave, you can do what you want to. Right. Right. But I'm going to do it the way I think it should be done. And like I said, 90, we have a huge success rate with accessories, and it's and people, you know, designers to me. You know, I would read, and I'm buying it all, and and receiving it, and pricing it, and putting it in my warehouse. But I would, I think that really takes less time than driving all over town and taking things on approval and keeping track of who I bought from where. And you know, it also limits your um, the availability of product because you only have access to what you can find locally rather than me just being able to buy it all direct. So that's where having my my business set up as a store really works because I can get exactly what I want. It also makes the installation of the job faster because I know exactly what lamp's going on that table. And I don't know right. exactly what candle's going on that tray because I ordered it right, for that right. job. Right, 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 right. And then do you, when you do the reveal install, do you have the separate list of all the items that were not included with the Correct. price tag so they can just buy it that day if they Correct. want? Correct. Yeah, yeah. I give them a week. I give them a week yeah. and then I, to, mm -hmm. to live with it. And then some people pay right away. They, you know, Three days later, like we're keeping everything. Here's my check. Right. Or we're returning. I always tell people you have to put in more because they got to return something. That's just human nature. So mm -hmm. yeah, because they I just really want to feel like they said no to something. Right. Like I'm going to return these three books. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And so we we you have to you have to put in more to get them to keep more. Something. I mean, yeah. That's always tell myself is oh I'm going to be over budget, but then I have to remind myself well they can't buy this tray if it's not in their living room. Right, 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 right. And what right. I always tell the client, I'm like, look, if I'm over budget on your accessories, my job is to make it beautiful. Your job is to know what's in your budget. Ah. So then if you go through and take it, so don't be mad at me because I had this happen early on. People would get mad because I brought out, you know, $20,000 in accessories and they had no idea. So now we have like, it's part of our front end process is setting those expectations, but of what to, what they can expect for accessories. Um, but I would say, you know, your, my job is you've hired me to make your house beautiful you know, you then can determine what you want to keep because I may think the lamps are incredible, but you may love the painting better. Right. And so if I just bring the lamps, you would have never seen the painting. So, right. you know, just 
I'm going to bring out what I think you need. But, you know, that's that's a huge um, profit center for us as accessories, and it's out. And, you know, I don't we don't, I don't show lamps. I mean, I, these designers who bring out pictures of lamps, like I don't know how, you're, how a client can be expected to know. That's where I think you bring it down to where it's – where you where you bite yourself and as a designer is when you're bringing them a, a tear sheet on a lamp because now you've just whittled it down to a widget mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. versus on their table with the bulb in it with the plastic off the shade plugged into the wall in its environment. I mean, they're, all they got to do is write you a check. Right, 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 right. You've paid the freight, you've paid the receiving, you've paid. You know. I love the statement. It's it's my job to design this to completion here to my job to make this as beautiful as I can. It's your job to decide if it's in your budget, like, Correct. you know, you're a grown up, pick, pick it and leave it. It's no different than you walk into a clothing store. You might really love that $4,000 suit. If you can't afford it, you're not going to buy it, but you know, nobody's right. yelling at the clothing store for having it on display. You tempted me with that. How could you well, do that? And, you know, you <laughs> basically get a sense once you've placed, that's why I don't order accessories till the custom orders play because if we've had to whittle that sofa down to $2,700, right. I'm not going to put an $800 lamp in their living room. Right, but right. if they've ordered an $8,000 sofa, then I can order with confidence an $800 lamp. And that's where I will say most of my uh, clients say a lot of the same things in my work when, they, when they've worked with me. And one of them is you can get more furniture in a room than anyone I've ever seen. <laughs> but they can't, they'll say, I can't believe all this fit in here. This room, But it looks bigger. How did you do that? I'm like, right. well, that's Again, that's the power of a decorator. So do you not run by them the accessory plan? You just say, here's the big plan, carpet, furniture, big things? Right. um, They see everything custom ordered, meaning that I consider a custom order like a sofa, a rug, a drapery, you know, things that are – that I cannot put in inventory and resell. But the rest of it, you just say, you'll be surprised. It'll be gorgeous, but you'll be surprised. Correct. Ah. And so I've I've learned – uh, you know, through through our selection process of the custom stuff, what their kind of threshold for pain is, you know, because now we've they've ordered, you know, if they've ordered a thirty thousand dollar Persian rug, that tells me something different than if I've ordered, you know, a two thousand dollar hand hooked rug that's still mm-hmm. wool and beautiful, but you know, they're they're more value c- conscious, so you know that I'm not going to order them a, a crazy lamp. However, I do splurge on lamps a lot. Most people, like that's the second thing people say about my work consistently is you have the most beautiful lamps. Mm. Where do you find these lamps? And I said, well, you're not going to find them at your local lamp store. Right. Because regular people don't walk in and buy thousand dollar lamps. Right. And the lamp store just by nature, retail by nature is volume driven. So they're going to, they, they were going to put things on the shelf that move. Right. And so you're not going to find these high end products, unfortunately, anymore. You know, used to, when I was a kid, you know, you had these gift shops, these fine gift shops that sold all these, you know, high end beautiful things because there was designers weren't as prevalent. So these stores, you know, I think every town had them, I guess. But, you know, now it's like that's where I that's where I get on my soapbox about the, you know, socialization of design, not democratization, where everything's like lowest common denominator. It's really hurt a lot of people who may love traditional design, but they just don't have access because it's not moving. You know, it's not selling in their market. Therefore, people aren't carrying it. Therefore, they even online, you know, because a lot of these vendors have quit making it. You have to do – I mean, a lot of times I have to do lamps and things antique now or vintage because the, all these vendors that used to carry this, that make it, have gone – have stopped carrying. They're only carrying, like, acrylic lamps. Mm. And that's where I get just frustrated when I go to market. Two markets ago, I got – we left market early because I was like, I can't order anything. There's nothing here I want. Wow. There's nothing here my clients want because it's all the same. If I see one more gray linen sofa <laughs> – you know, oh, Eric, let me show you our latest linen. Get the hell out of here. So what I want to say to people is like <laughs> when reps come in and show me their linen, I'm like, do you know me at all? I've worked with you for 20 years. You know, so that's just, and again, that comes with knowing who my client is, who my customer, what my own passion is. I'm not, you know, I don't have passion for that. I've, you know, when I've never ordered, I never ordered beige linen ever, ever. I, and I'm not going to, like, I just, mm. you know, I think, I think when someone hires a designer, they want to wow. Mm-hmm. And beige linen does not wow me. 
Right, right. Well, really, you have it, a very it, specific look. I mean, I, well, I read it, it on your website. You it, it says that. Well, but you you said on your website you're not you're make no apology for embracing brown wood, classical moldings and architecture, and antique furnishings. That's you're just you. This is who you are, and this is your aesthetic, and it's who it what makes you like you said earlier makes your heart sing. It makes it yeah. happy for you. Yeah. Yes. And of course, by doing exactly what is so authentic and true to you and really lights you up, you automatically attract the clients that are out there that appreciate that. Because the truth is the whole world has gone to a certain, you know, washed out gray linen, whatever, you know, aesthetic you want to call it. But there are people that are like you that still want the, the, the layers and the color. I, I saw on your website, the you, I think it's a, a room in your house where the French doors are painted uh, like I'm going to call it podcast green. You know, they're, yeah, they're, they're yes. gorgeous. <laughs> yes, yes. And that was just to give more visual interest. I right. mean, I think when you have small spaces, sometimes you need to work harder than if you have big spaces. And, right. you know, everything is subjective and you know, our job as designers, of course, is to get in there and learn what makes the client tick. And that's where I, that's where I go back to. You can't, you can't internet that. You can't Uberize no. that. No. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.